So I'm still in the hotel room, as you can tell. And I just wanted to keep the momentum going because I, I was told that's what I have to do. So here we go. Today's uh, topic will be on choosing the topic for your dissertation. And um, I'm going to try to explain to you the importance of it and what you should and should not do uh, in, in choosing the topic, how you do it, etc., without using any uh, um, jargon or any um, words that may confuse you. So um, I'm just going to assume you're on the other side of the table, you're having a copy, and I'm trying to explain to you what it is all about. Uh, in the second series that I'm planning, I will go properly into each of those topics. Uh, so again, um, I'm better today, but my voice is still a bit rough. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about dissertation and choosing the topic. So when we think about what we want to work on, what we think about is um, something that we know about usually. So we think we already have an answer before even we begin our dissertation and that's the wrong thing to think because you never know what the research will prove in the end. Uh, you may just find that what you thought all along is not so, once you collect your data, etc. But let's just talk about topic first. Usually new students, they come and they have this great idea about something that they work with or uh, their personal experiences and, and, and so on. and. Uh, they want to look into it deeper, for whatever reason. Um, and um, I will start, I think, with an example. Let's just assume, because that, that was my, my topic, uh, let's just assume that we want to look into panic attacks. Now, my work was in psychophysiology, so I did a lot of lab work. But let's just make it simple. Uh, let's just say you want to look into panic attacks in single mothers, no pregnancy. So we already narrowed the focus. We say panic attacks in single mothers. Uh, it really is not important why you want to do it at this moment. So uh, you may have an idea that single mothers have more panic attacks than those who are married. And you want to work with it and uh, you know find out if that is so. Uh, when you start looking at the topic, um, you need to look at the research first. So you have to forget about the media and TV, newspapers, you know, Hollywood stars who had panic attacks and so on. You need to uh, look into the published peer-reviewed papers. That's all that counts. No other background will be valid for your PhD topic. So you're going to go to various databases, maybe Google Scholar or ProQuest or there are many others, and you're going to find out something about panic attacks and single parents or single mother, mothers, and um, you're going to read a lot. <laughs> and that's one of those things, you have to read a lot, because if you don't, how do you know that somebody didn't do the topic you plan to do? So you need to read a lot and try to focus on the last five years of research for the moment. So, as you're reading along, you know, it is tedious work, but as you're reading along, there will be the time when something will come to your mind and you say, look, I read all these dozens and dozens of papers, but nobody looked into X. And that is your maybe your gap in the research that you may wish to address. So uh, once you find that gap in the research, then you will be started thinking about uh, uh, your title. Okay, so first you have to find a gap. You cannot just pull the research out of your head and, and say, okay, I want to do that. No, you, your topic, your gap needs to come from reading. Okay? Um, why is this important? Um, it is important because if you just
always have in your mind looking into panic attacks in single mothers. You're forgetting the fact that single mothers uh, may be one large group. However, within the group, there are many subgroups. So, a single mother may be employed, unemployed, uh, in good relationship with the uh, child's father, not in good relationship with child's father. Uh, she may be poor, she may be rich, she may uh, have help from parents, to her parents. Um, uh, she may be healthy, she may be older, she may be younger, etc. So, if we say single mothers and panic attacks, we really cannot put everybody under the same umbrella. Um, so, you need to uh, always remember that there are a lot of subgroups in the group that we want to look at. So, this is the first thing then. You need to read a lot about your topic. Then you're going to find a gap in the research after you read a lot and found out something that will just come in front of you. If nothing comes in front of you from research, previous research, then you have to rethink your topic. Uh, but usually something comes in front of you that somebody has missed, or maybe somebody said, look, we need to um, look into X, Y, Z in future. So maybe it's just something you want to do. So you will find a gap. Once you find a gap, you're going to focus really uh, narrow in uh, your title first. So you will say, for example, just as an example, panic attacks in single unmarried mothers under 40 years old. Okay? Something like that. So you understand now why we cannot say um, panic attacks in single mothers only. Okay? So this is what we have to do. And for this little short recording, I'm going to leave you with that, okay? Uh, because this is very, very important that you have to remember. You need to read published papers and not just pick something, oh, I would like to do that. Yes, great, but you still must look into the published papers, okay, before you do any further research. So, next topic uh, I will talk about tomorrow will be the purpose of your research. You may think, oh, well, what's, what's new? I mean, the purpose is I want to find something about something. That's not that simple, okay? So, please come tomorrow, and um, we will continue our coffee talk. Thanks again, and I promise I will get better as the time goes along. Uh, my voice will improve, my nose will get unblocked, and all will be just great, okay? If I don't see you before 2018, have a great 2018. Thank you very much and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and found some value in those talks. Thank you.